Hello everyone, Caroline here from Mind and Muse Crafts. This is episode 24 and as usual I am coming to you from the island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean where I live with my family and every two weeks or so I come here and I share with you the crafty side of my life. Crafty, craftiness that includes some crochet, knitting, some felting, some sewing and well, basically, whatever craftiness comes to mind during those previous two weeks. Um, hello, and how are you? I hope you're doing well. I am just recently back from my Easter vacation where I traveled to Spain with my husband and a couple of family members. So um, we've been back for a couple of days. I have had time to do some to rest. I have had time to try and get my body to return to this the time on this side of the world. And I've also had time for some crafting. And so um, I will just get on with that part of this conversation. Let's talk a little bit about our crafts. First of all, I want to remind you that we have been for maybe almost two months now running a mal the first mal that we've been running on this channel it is called the in harmony mal it is a make along in which i have invited you to participate with projects that involve more than one crafts more than one craft so you can visit the mind and muse crafts group on ravelry and there are two threads open. There is the chatter thread where people have expressed their ideas of what they were planning on making and where they have asked questions about some of the makes or what possibilities there are for combining crafts. And you will also find the finished objects thread, which is a non chatter thread will simply, uh, well, chatter in the sense that you can't respond. Only the person that presents their, um, Projects can talk a little bit about their project if they wish, and if not, they mostly just post a picture of how their finished object ended up. Uh, in this case, we would like you in that finished object thread to mention something about how you have combined different crafts, which of the crafts you use um, in the make, because it's not always obvious when you look at something. If you see a blanket, for example, it's not obvious that crocheting and knitting was used and in what parts. and. So yes, do that for us. Do us that favor and just when you post your finished objects, mention how you have used, uh, what crafts you have used and in what way and you will qualify to maybe run for a possible prize at the end. We are ending this mail the 28th of April. So you've got maybe another week if you are a fast crafter or if your project isn't that um, large. Well, you will still have an opportunity. You may still have an opportunity to enter it into this smell and uh, sure, and we will appreciate it. And I've looked at all of them. There are some adorable things there. There's a tea cozy that I'm just eyeing because, oh, I've always wanted to make one. Maybe not make one, but yes, to have one. <laughs> and it was really pretty. And so it has inspired me to get my talents together and my nerves together and try out some more knitting and crochet to make up a tea cozy. I have several teapots and they would look very pretty in a tea cozy with that style. Well, there are many, there are several other projects there. It is, um, you won't be overwhelmed because there are, there are not hundreds of projects there, but there's a good handful and it's a good a lot of eye candy. It's good for your eyes to go in and check out what's been posted there. So I invite you once again, the um, In Harmony Mal that is running until the 28th of April. So let's get on with the regular segments of this um, podcast. And for the first one is normally where I walk the talk. In other words, where I talk to you or and I show you myself wearing some of the things that I have made. And in this case, if you are a keen eye, if you're a keen viewer, if you've been around for a while, um, I am wearing a finished top, a finished crochet top. And so this is the Luna Las, no, it's not Luna, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got something else in my mind. This is Las Nubes blouse or top. 
and it is a design by Crochet Cakes. It is a design in testing. It has not been published, but um, I have finished it, and so I'll give you a little whirl of what this one looks like. It's a little bit different from hers because I used a thinner thread, as I have told you in previous episodes, and I used a smaller hook, and I. it's actually not a very good test because it's more modified than anything else, but we were able to clarify uh, some of the wordings and we were able to catch some small errors in stitch count or whatever. And so it hasn't totally been a loss, but I will have to sit down and make another one just so that I can actually help her with the what I was actually asked to do, right? Which was to test her pattern. Now, to modify it, but um, it has served as an experience to us because um, she believes that, well, if if some of the modifications that I made uh, could probably be mentioned in the pattern as a second option or a se second possibility, but, well, it was, in no way was it to, to uh, give you the idea that the pattern was faulty. It is a gorgeous pattern and it is fine as it is. It was just me messing around with ideas and losing track of what my responsibility was here, which was to test a pattern and not to go off on my own, as I usually do with the modifications of other things that could be done. So, well, anyway, I'll show it to you. This is at least a, a, a brief, a brief and a short um, exhibition. And so basically, this is it. This is um, what Las Nubes is going to somewhat look like <laughs> when it is published. I started this pattern to test this pattern somewhere around March and I was I am using this whirl yarn which is a yarn from Red Heart. This is the romance colorway and it um the whirl is simply a series of colors. I think I called it a gradient and maybe that wasn't the best way to describe it. There are color changes, but they're not the same color. They, they, they're the, the, as you can see, right? The changes are, are pretty noticeable. And as such, they are all, they also have small knots in between the different colors. So you need to watch out for that if you're not the kind of person that just likes to crochet over them. And so there are, there are some knots in, in the way the yarn is drawn. It is a very thin, it's, it's classified as number one, so it would be, a, I would call it a very thin fingering weight. If, if you were to call it that, actually, I would probably just call it crochet thread because it is so fine. And so due to the, that choice, well, I had to make some changes, <laughs> some modifications, so that I could actually test the large pattern, which was the one that I wanted to test. So you'll see that it fits me basically pretty well, but, the large is not going to look like that. This one looked like that because it was large, but I used a very thin yarn and I also used a very small hook. I did not use the suggested hook size because my yarn was not compatible with the yarn that she did her original project in. So, yes, it, I failed. It wasn't it wasn't a good test, but the garment turned out the garment turned out pretty well. And I have to say that um, I also added two rows of the initial um, pineapple that I don't think were needed. Uh, her original one has only one row and I think it still would have been long enough but since I was worried that the yarn was so thin and I do like to nowadays use my tops a little longer than maybe a couple years back. So there it is, Las Nubes and hopefully it'll be coming out soon for your enjoyment. Well, I've also got earrings on that I made. Belongs to a set that I made a long while back, but it um, is nothing except just a, uh, a bead wire wrapped and placed on a hook. But I didn't want to use the whole set because I didn't want to distract from the, from the top. That's the main attraction today is that I have finished this last newest uh, modified pattern and it fits well and I'm very happy with it. So, this is one of the projects that belongs to my end of the line section in this podcast because it is a finished project. And so, talking about a second project that reached the end of the line in this episode, I'll mention my Jessica shawl. 
If you follow me on Instagram, I have mentioned um, that I finished this and I won at my yarn chicken. Jessica Shawl is a free pattern by uh, Bob Wilson123. And um, it is a granny crescent shawl. You know, see all the granny stitches there? It is a granny crescent. And as I have mentioned before, I crocheted this up using Lion Brand's shawl in a ball. And this was the Peaceful Earth colorway. And look at all those colors. Isn't that, isn't that a very pretty combination of colors? So I used one ball here for the body, for the main body. And then I did not have enough for the edging, which anyway, um, the designer suggests that could be done in a contrasting color. So from my stash, I chose not, maybe not very contrasting, but I chose a color that was very close to one of the colors that was already in this whorl or this ball of yarn. And it is wool. It is a wool blend. This is also a cotton acrylic. So it's maybe 60-40. This is classified as a medium weight. So, And it's mostly because um, there is a variation in thicknesses. At some points it is very thin and at other points it is very thick. And so I guess that's why, because I wouldn't, I didn't feel it to be worsted at all. I didn't feel it to be very thick. And so I chose a fingering weight yarn that I had in my stash. You remember from the last time I told you this is called Hagrid's Hut. And it is a colorway dyed up by Little Bean Loves Yarn. I purchased it some while back. It's not a new color. And so it's just got variations. Again, I can show you a picture of the cake because it's very different from what you're seeing now because of the fact that I used it double. It is a gradient cake. It goes from dark browns on the end. Well, the way my cake was was caked up. My yarn was caked up. It goes from dark brown on the outside and as you get closer to the inner it goes through a series of different types of yellows until it gets to a, a, a cream colored yarn. And so I made two balls, held them together because I wanted it to be of a comparative thickness to the yarn I was using. And uh, so that's why you're seeing the colors that you're seeing. But uh, I did the edging twice because I, since I was doubling up on the yarn, I went up to a larger hook. This I made in a 5.5 millimeter hook. I made the main part of it in a 5.5. When I got to the edging, I decided to go up a hook size because I wanted it to be drapey. But I had finished the edging and I just didn't like the way it was looking because I felt that the stitches looked too large in compared to the stitches that were on the main body. So I, and I also didn't have enough yarn. I was missing one row. I was missing the final edging here that this like pico edging. I didn't have enough yarn to do that. And so I ripped it all back, went back to my 5.5 millimeter hook and the 100 gram skein of Hagrid's Hut was enough to do the complete edging. The complete edging, I think, has six rows. And when you're doing them, you are at the largest part of your shawl. So it's where you're going to need the most amount of yarn. So 100 grams went into, went into this edging. Now, my shawl is probably not as large as hers. Hers is a larger shawl because she uses a different yarn and... I also think she uses a bigger hook with her yarn because because it's a different gauge of yarn. You can check all these details out on her pattern. It's free on her blog, bobwilson123.com, and you can check all of that out. But the idea uh, was that I'm pretty sure hers was larger because she used a lot. She used a lot more yarn than I used. I just used that one skein of Lion Brands shawl in a ball and I'm thinking that what I mentioned before that it was probably somewhere near 450 yards but I can check that for you it's um, 150 grams 481 yards and so all of that 
the 400, 150 grams and 481 yards are completely used in this shawl. And then I also used an additional 100 grams, which is probably about 430, because it's fingering weight, 430 yards, but it was because I held it double. Remember, I held it double. So if you're using maybe a DK or something, then uh, you won't, well, you'll need the yardage. Um, yeah, you might be, depending on how much yardage your DK one gives you in 100 grams, you might be able to just do the whole, the whole edging in that yarn, but with this, using this yarn, because if you follow her pattern, her shawl is a lot bigger, but this is a big shawl. Yeah, I'll try and, and show you the whole thing. This is a big shawl, and my sister is going to love it. If you remember, this is going out to my sister. She is going to love it because she wanted a shawl that she could use at her church meetings where they put on the air conditioner. She doesn't, she's not a very uh, coldish type of person, but this, even though this has got all the tech, the typical crochet holes, she'll be able to use it and it will keep her warm. I feel warm and it's nice and long at the back. So I think she's going to like this a lot. And so she doesn't watch this podcast, but anyway, <laughs> it, her shawl is finished and uh, I will either send it out to her. It hasn't been blocked. This has not been blocked. So I've, once it's blocked, this edging is going to stretch. This edging is going to stretch. I'm going to get all of these points to be nice and pointy and she'll, it'll probably have a couple of inches more of length to it. So, so there's still yet to be done with this, but all the edges are woven in. I've been nice about that and she'll be able to receive her shawl either by mail or I don't know if I'll wait until she comes to pick it up on her next visit, but it's hers and, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Okay, so those are the two projects that I that reached the end of the line uh, over these past two weeks. This one I did not take with me. This one, it only took me a couple of hours to redo. I had already done, as I told you, the, um, the edging. So when I got back, I frogged it and I redid it in a smaller hook size so that I could reach the um, six rows with that just that one yarn. And it was like maybe... I had 10 inch tail left at the end and that was it. So I was very happy. This is all stash. And if you remember one of the focuses of my crocheting, my making this year is on using stash because, hello, <laughs> my stash has gotten out of hand. Out of hand because I'm the type of person that does something for a while and then will either get tired of it or will want to move on to something else. And so I know that in my lifetime, I won't be able to use all of this yarn. So I want to get it, I want to get it, I want to get it used up. And so when I redid my crafting corner and putting it onto this wall, I realized a lot of things about my stash. I realized how much I had, I, how much of certain colors I had, how much of a certain yarn dyer I had. And so there are things that need to be mended, things that need to change. And so I've been working out of my stash. And so this is completely stash. And it's a great feeling to, to be able to use up things that we have in our stash and make beautiful things and always blows my mind every time I think about it how stitch by stitch we can create such beautiful things and so I'm very happy with both of those makes in terms of um what I've been pressing on with well I'm going to take this off first because although it is not a very hot it's not a very heavy or hot shawl well oh in the tropics it's not very hot today. It's actually a very gloomy day, and I was reconsidering whether I should or should or should not uh, podcast in this room because of the fact that I can tell you can tell that I've got a shadow um, in the lighting, and I don't have a lamp um, to add additional light. So it's gloomy out, and that's it's going to rain. So that's why. The lighting isn't as good in this room as it normally is, but that's fine. You can see me fine, and you'll be able to see my projects and 
The lighting is not that bad that it distorts the colors. These The colors are coming out pretty well. So I'm going to press on with it. <laughs> I'm going to press on with it. So one of the projects, uh, let's see. Oh, I, this is what I had left going back to my Las Nubes top. This is what I had left. So I wasn't able to use it all. Maybe if I had changed the... <laughs> Maybe if I had modified the sleeves to make them longer, I would have been able to use it, but I didn't. So, uh, that is done. My Jessica shawl is done, and pressing on. Over the past couple of weeks, I have been pressing on with my lace peplum top, which is a pattern from issue number 42 of Inside Crochet, which is a UK crochet magazine, if you're not familiar with it. And this is a pattern, Lace and Peplum Top, is by Simone Francis, and she, she publishes quite frequently in magazines. And I have been working on it. Excuse me. I have been working on it using this Hawthorne. Is it Hawthorne? I'll check for you. I've only got it. I know it's Conway Valley. I don't know why I keep calling it Hawthorne. Conway Valley Yarns is the um, yarn that I have been using. It is a 60% Piba cotton and 40% acrylic. This is color number 13. I did look up the color because I had to order. I didn't have enough yarn to finish it, but I don't remember. Mm, blue stone? It's something about the stone. And um, I believe it's classified as DK yarn. Yes, I believe it's classified as DK. Well, anyway, I have been working on that. This is what I have left. I did not have enough to finish the peplum. I'm missing about four rows on the peplum, but this is what I have up to now. Okay. I haven't, I have not woven in any ends. I did complete the, the neck band, the collar, the Peter Pan collar. And this, the peplum on this blouse is pretty long. I have about four more rows to go. I have been able to try it on and I like the way it looks. It is heavy. If I compare it to this, obviously, this is quite heavy. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to use it like in the air conditioned spaces and things like that. Notice that I could have completed these sleeves because the sleeves have nothing except um, one row, I believe, of edging and single crochets with this uh, with the second color, which is merely just this gray. Probably has a name to it also, but the band only has a color number. So, yes. Up to now, I am happy with it. You'll see that I have pins holding the collar down because it had a tendency to curl. So until I block it, it's going to stay that way. Once I block it, I believe that it will soften up and it will just hang nicely. But when I was trying it on, it bothered me <laughs> that it should roll up. So I pinned it so I could get a better view of what it was going to look like. And so it's a nice pattern. Um, easy to follow. I did not, and as usual with... Um, I'm very weary of patterns that are published in magazines because, I don't know, my experience has been that you find, you can find frequently find mistakes. And so, but this one was not. This one, I did not find any mistake to it. I believe I, follow, I followed the pattern exactly. Am I saying this? Are these words actually coming out of my mouth? I followed the pattern exactly. Is that true? Let me check. You remember that I had begun it once using a different stitch and then I changed it because it was way too heavy for this yarn. Uh, yes, I did do a modification. 
This has the seam all the way down. The original pattern has a seam all the way down the middle of the back. And so I moved that seam to the side. I did move that seam to the side. And one of the things I learned with this project was um, a way to keep my half double crochet seam from traveling, from running. And it was very, it was a very good technique. I just looked it up on YouTube how to avoid a traveling seam. And uh, there are a lot of videos. I just used one and the idea was perfect. And it worked perfectly and it was not difficult. It worked very well and it was not difficult. And I much preferred to have the seam along the side than to have it all the way down the back. I guess you hide it a little more since your arms are usually down at your side. Well, whatever. So yes, I did make that change, but all the rest, I. This was this is a project that I took on because I wanted to participate in the Vintage Mal that is being hosted by Crochet Cakes. And it ends also, I believe, at the end of this month, which is bad news for me because since I had done the whole, the whole yoke in a different stitch and then realized that I didn't like it and just decided to rip it all back and follow the instructions of the designer. It, I guess those days, uh, extra two or three days were actually what I needed, even though I ran out of yarn. But I thought I could leave the peplum like this. I mean, this, has, this is going to be black, so that peplum is going to stretch a bit more. And I do find it pretty long. Pretty long. But I'm a fan of peplum, so I don't have a problem with it. So I could probably just finish it up and leave it like that and call it a game because it fits well. I could just, I have enough yarn to finish the edging on the, on the sleeve and I could just call it a day with that. But I ordered the yarn to finish the peplum and because I was also thinking about adding more, more sleeve to it because I'm not a big fan of sleeveless anymore. <laughs> I like sleeves and so I was thinking about adding sleeves to this and so I ordered an extra ball to be able to do that um, and since I ordered it I guess I should use it but I don't know I guess I'll think about it I could actually probably just make a a, um, a thicker edging here or add a different edging that is not just single crochet well at any rate, it is not done today, and but it will be done by the next time I podcast, and it will most likely be my um, part of my walk in the talk session. Okay, so this is the Lace and Peplum uh, blouse by Simone Francis inside crochet number 42, and I like it very much. I would have liked to have used, to have been able to use the yarn that the designer used because it was a thinner cotton. It, it wasn't a, like this one, it wasn't a thread, but it was a bit lighter than this. And that would have made the overall garment a bit lighter also. But I'm happy with it. It's a, it's a nice blouse and I'm sure that I will get use out of it. Okay, and so, that's it. I actually have nothing else on my needles at the moment because you'll remember that I have carried over some projects from previous. I was hoping to be able to work on this and I almost took the socks with me on the vacation as the project to work on on the plane. Because it was small, because it was knitting and not crochet, I figured there was a different arm movement and that way I wouldn't continue to irritate um, my shoulder. But at the same point, I was so advanced in the two tops that I was working on and I really wanted to get this top done for Clarissa Beth and I wanted to get the other one done for the vintage mail and so I took those with me and I didn't take the sock. But what I'm thinking about doing now is that the I am going to pick up the sock. It was supposed to be for 
my own um, mouth, the In Harmony mouth, because it has a crochet toe and it has a knitted sole and, well, basically foot. <laughs> when I reached the heel, I was going to crochet the heel and then I was going to complete the leg and the cuff in knitting. And so I was going to combine knitting and crochet in more than one spot of my sock to make it. But, well, as with all knitting projects, it comes to a point where I just, oh, it takes so long. And this is very thin fingering weight also. And so um, new things came and distracted me. And so I just left it and... When I leave a project, it's really hard for me to get back on with it. So I've got two projects that I need to bring back. They are both knitting projects, and I have to. I want to get them done before the year ends. So I am going to pick up again this sock, which was a pattern that I purchased way last year sometime, published by Kay Jones in a, a series. And I can't believe, but this is all I got. I think that is the reason why I became discouraged because I had to pull a whole bunch back. And now it's tiny. I was already at the point where I could start my heel and I noticed that I had a whole line of stitches that had been made incorrectly. And I think I have them here too. So I don't know, it needs to be pulled back. It needs to be pulled back. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the second sock and bring it up to the same point and then work on them simultaneously. I think this was Jemima. I'm thinking this was Jemima, but I want to get it done. Elizabeth started the same sock way after I started this one. And she is making that one for me, and she, she already finished it. And I haven't gotten this one done. I was uh, crocheting a, this is the star. Again, a modified star toe. And honestly, something else that has stopped me from pushing on with this is that I cannot, for the lights of me, remember how I made that toe. How I modified the pattern to make it, and... I can. I usually have a notebook in each of my projects where I write down changes I've made or notes to myself that I want to put in my Ravelry page and things like that. And this one has no notebook. So the beautiful blue yarn here, the yellow is just from Stash, uh, leftover. But the blue one, I still have the ball. It is Superwash Merino uh, with Donegal Neps, blue sea glass. Blue sea glass, 436 yards, 100 grams, fingering weight. Um, yes, by Melissa Dawn Wool Artist. She is no longer called that. She is now Acorn Willows, but this was very much at the beginning where she started dying. And um, it's, so it's also been in my stash for a while. So I want to pick that up. That's the next thing I want to get back on with. And I'm not going to put it far away from me because I want to restart that. The second thing I have in my plan, so I guess this one is no longer um, pressing on. Um, this is, we'll move on to the section where I talk a little bit about my future plans for my crafting. And uh, my crafting bubble, I think I have named it. One of the things that I want to pick up is a Luna top. It's the Luna pattern by Dora Orenstein. If you remember, I made this top already some time ago. I think it was the first pattern that I made from that book. This was this is the book, and in her book, if you haven't seen it before, I've talked about it a lot, so you probably have, and other people have. It's a, it, it was like uh, when it came out, when it was published, there was a lot of... Um, People trying out these patterns and it's got some lovely patterns in it one of them is 
called Luna. Okay, and it's done in this very pretty variegated blue and purple yarn. And I have always wanted to make it in a yarn like that. Because look at the colors, it's so pretty. But it is wool. The first one I made, I made it in cotton, in row and cotton. It is wool and I mean, I really wouldn't use it that much if I made it in wool, so. One of the things people didn't like about the top, oh, I'll see if I can get some of, not get all the glossy shine. But one of the things people didn't like about the top was the seam that it has all the way down the back. But I've spoken to you before about my friend Stasia, my friend Stasia Crochet from Instagram. And she has made the top several times. And the last one, she managed to move the seam to the side instead of down the back. And so I'm going to try and do that also. I don't have that color yarn. I never got that color. This one, the book has been published for, for some time. So the one that's used there is obviously no longer available. But in my stash, I did have this yarn. This, um, what is this? Debbie Bliss Juliet Summer Tweed. And though it's not the same colors, obviously, but it is very variegated. And so I'm thinking that when I made my first one, I made it in a solid green, a solid forest green. And the seam is very noticeable. I am just hoping that with this one, the seam will be less noticeable because of the fact that it's so variegated. This is 52% cotton and 48% acrylic. It just says color number five, summer tweed. But in my stash I had, I believe it was maybe 250 grams of this. One, two, three, four, 200. And I was able to procure two more recently I'm hoping they'll look pretty much the same and so I won't have to exchange or you know interchange um, your ball the balls but that is a project that I want to put on my hook very soon because of the fact that it is made in very long stitches it works up pretty quick it works up pretty quick um, I just have to remember the modifications that I had to do to mine because I did have to make it smaller than the recommended because it was just the, the sizing was coming out too big for me. But hopefully I have that on my Ravelry page and so I'll be able to pick that up soon. Maybe who knows if for the, our next podcast that will be on my hook. And the other thing that I'm planning is also I have been wanting all year to participate in Crochet Luna's Um, I know it's not called the year of the sock is an Instagram um, crochet along or knit along hosted by Hannah of the crochet cozy cottage crochet uh, where you just knit or crochet or weave or I don't know whatever however you like to make your socks and then you just put the pictures on the Instagram with a hashtag, with the hashtag Year of the Sock. And uh, you can participate in that. But Crochet Luna has also a, a um, cow. It's called, I'm going to read it from her post. It's, um, it's a sock theme cow 2019. And what she did was she posted themes for every month of the year until December and then she's having a year-long cow so well the first part of the year has gone by but for now April there's still a week left and if you are quick at making your socks you could still enter your sock into into this cow the quarter two themes in April it's when it rains it pours in May all in bloom and in June, seeing the bright side. So, if I did nothing else, I could get a crochet sock done in a week. 
this. I could definitely do that. So, but I am unsure about if I want to do that or not. Um, I'd have to look through my stash to see how I could reflect that theme when it rains, it pours. But for all in bloom, I might have, I don't know, I have to look through my stash and see what I have. But definitely in May, at the end of May, May 31st, Clarissa Beth comes back to Puerto Rico for her wedding. She's going to celebrate her wedding here in Puerto Rico. And so I definitely thought that I wanted to uh, crochet or knit up a sock for that end of May, May, June. And so I'll either go with the all in bloom, but I was heading, I was, I was tending more towards the theme, seeing the bright side, right? Clarissa Beth is my youngest daughter, and she is the first of my children to marry. And um, she is the only one of my children with which I share the love for crafting. And so there's got to be a bright side to her getting married. <laughs> That's the way I'm seeing it. So I definitely want to go with that theme. And I've looked through my stash for that one, and I've seen a couple of combinations that I thought looked pretty bright. I'm going to go with the bright, right? Um, seeing the bright side, these are, this is, this was a yarn uh, dyed by Little Bean Loves in her Halloween calendar, or Halloween, it was the, did she do the whole month of Halloween? I think she did the whole month of Halloween. 31 days, so she did like a, 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 not an advent calendar, but a calendar for Halloween. And this was one of the, the um, skeins that she, I think it's 50 grams. So I need to combine it. And so I chose this one. This was dyed up by Betsy Makes. It was another Halloween color, a mini that she dyed up for Halloween. And so uh, that seems pretty bright to me because I looked through my stash and I just could not find bright. And I'm like, what is this? I am not a bright, colorful person. And there was very, there were, most of my colors were watered down. They were mauled. They were, they were not bright at all. So tell me, do you think that's bright enough? <laughs> it's not a June color. I know it's not a June color, but I think it's pretty bright. I also have these leftovers. I made a sock with this once, a crochet sock, and I've got some left over. Both of these have been used as crochet socks before, but I think they go well together. And that pink is so bright that I can't even open my eyes well. It's called explosive material, by the way. This one, I don't know, it was gifted to me in a swap. Um, I thought about this. Is that bright? Nah, right? That's not bright. This was the the um, Halloween calendar had um, ske um, mini skeins, I think 20 grams. It had some 30 grams. It had some 50 grams. It just had one 100 gram. So it was a big package. And this is called Kindly Old Spinster Ladies. She chose themes of different Halloween. I've mentioned this before, but she chose themes of different Halloween movies and put them together. So what do you think about that? Is that, I mean, they're more, this is more of a June color. As a matter of fact, um, there's some blue in the colors that Clarissa has chosen for her, as her wedding colors. None of these colors, but there is blue. So... Well, yeah, is, is that bright? Or how about this one? Nah. Does that seem bright to you? This is a Nora George yarn that has been in my stash for a while. Four Privet Drive. BFL sock, 80% superwash, blue face luster, and nylon. And I love crocheting socks with blue face luster. This one is a... Um, uh, died by Little Bean Loves again. So because of the fact that this is ha has Stellina in it, 
I figured that qualified as being bright, but I'm not sure. So yeah, there's a couple of things to choose from. If you have a favorite, please tell me below and help me decide. But I definitely think that I will be going with the June one. Um, I'm going to try to look into May and see if I have something that could be all in bloom. But if not, um, I will definitely go with June. And so besides that, I don't usually talk about purchases and things like that. But I did want to mention a young dyer who is changing her, making a big change in her life and is um, closing down her her dyeing, her yarn dyeing shop. And she goes by the name of Emmy Couture Yarns. And she put a, a sale, a big, a huge sale on her shop or in her shop. And it's been going on for a while because I got these before our trip. And so I simply chose one of the thing, options that she had, and I believe I looked and it's no longer available, it's no longer available for 100 gram skeins, is she had a mystery selection where you simply chose a, a shade. You could choose, I want to choose from blues or greens or this was natural. And then she would send you her selection, her pick of three skeins of yarn from that tone and so I chose neutral and this is what she sent me it was a great bargain the individual skeins are up for $15 right now and so I also purchased this one um, 462 yards 100 grams 75 subwash merino 25% but I loved the color which is mm, maybe not coming out exactly but I also love the name it's called the gentleman's waistcoat and that she just got me there with that one so unfortunately I only bought one but it's got nylon so they'll make some pretty nice socks so if you have a chance and you, you want to go, it's emmycoutureyarns.com, emmycouture.com. And uh, look her up and see what she's got left. I was looking yesterday, I believe, and I still think there are beautiful skeins available. And she's um, lowered the price so much that it's practically a steal to buy them at the point. So if you've got a chance, please visit her and help her out. She's trying to sell out all the yarn so that she can move on to a different, a big change in her life. Well, I think this is all that I have to share with you today. And I am very happy to have been, have returned from my vacation and be able to still make my two weeks mark with you. So hopefully you haven't felt abandoned by me. Thank you if you are a new viewer for pressing that watch button and for um, venturing into giving me a chance to sit and chat with you for a while. Hopefully you would have liked our conversation today and will be willing to come back. If you are a returning viewer, thank you, thank you, thank you a millions because so many of you are so loyal to always come back every two weeks and look into what I've been doing and uh, to give me compliments and to comment and have a conversation with me on what you have seen. And so I'm very thankful. It is um, the motivation to continue doing this is just knowing that you guys are out there waiting for this conversation to occur. So thank you for joining me. If you have liked my content, please hit the like button below so that um, I get a feeling for what subjects and what topics you are most interested in. If you would like to comment, please comment below and we can continue this conversation uh, a little bit longer. If um, you would like to help me to get exposed to more people and have more viewers sharing this content, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification button if that's something that you would like. If you would like to be notified every two weeks when or whenever it is that I put up a new episode without having to, to actually go into YouTube, we'll do so. Hit that notification bell and you will be reminded whenever I have uploaded something new. So in the meantime, before we meet again, please take care of yourself, keep yourself safe, keep yourself 
healthy and if you get a chance try and keep crafting bye for now